morning, everyone. Welcome to Spirit Coffee Talk. It's been a morning. Let's just say that. I think we've uh, we've been we've been having some challenges here, um, technology wise, <laughs> human wise. It's been it's it's been a moment. So all to say, um, welcome. My name's Elise. Lovely Jeanette and Lisa here with us today. Uh, we're going to talk about navigating challenges as humans, right? Because oftentimes we we're spiritual people. This is spirit coffee talk. We talk about spirit and that's important. And then sometimes we default to spirit rather than actually default to ourselves. And like, how do we support ourselves and our human self in moving through things? So with that to say, how are we doing? How, how's everybody? I think that was a perfect intro to really explain exactly what's going on. I think that coming from this week, this has been like a gauntlet week for me personally, but also a lot of people that I've talked to personally, but also clients um, that I've worked with. And I feel like there is this continuous theme, at least like you were talking about, uh, really experiencing things on such a human level. And that um, I really think that as spiritual people, sometimes we tend to what is called spiritually bypass the situation. Mm -hmm. And for people who are unfamiliar with what that term is, it's using spiritual practices and guidance to kind of overpass the stages of grief or um, really stages of acknowledging and working through our human experiences. So we're not saying don't have a relationship with spirit or letting that feeling of being ultimately supported and loved and guided within the spirit world. But when we are deeply in, in, in you know, surrounded <laughs> by a, a human experience, sometimes it can feel like it's easier to go into the spirit world and not experience our human experience on this on this earth plane in which we're at right now so i don't know like we had talked about it a couple of weeks ago and if you hadn't seen that spirit coffee talk episode i really encourage you to watch we're we're talking about going into the corners of our existence that like the depths of those corners to like search out those things that really needed to be cleared out in order for us personally and then therefore on a collective level really um consciously move into a higher vibration and by doing that by moving into this higher vibration we really do have to take a look at the things that are wearing us down on this human level it's experiences that continually come up triggers that continually face us and everybody's different like what is it what is it for you that is coming up all the time that you think like really again but really understand that when it's surfaced so significantly, especially within this last couple of weeks, it's your ability to see it and actually work through it on a human level by acknowledgement in what you can call forward, maybe in the highest consciousness. Let me see and experience this in the highest level consciousness I'm able to do so that I can see it head on and work through it in my humanness so that I can expand and grow as an individual instead of being like, okay, well, this is happening for a reason. And on a soul level, I chose for this to happen so that I could, you know, and I understand that they're just actors in my role to be able to trigger me in this. And so I can pray and feel that I can go into light and love and be able to just like meditate my way through it, which there's tons of greatness in that, in your meditation and your connection to spirit to help you with the strength in order to really deal with what's coming up for you on a human base. Because it's easier to reflect it onto other people or ask spirit to just take it so that you don't have to see it. And I think what we're saying right now is this is an opportunity for us to really dive into our humanness and our healing on a human level so that we can move forward in ascension. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that, that's really what the spirit world wants, right? They want us to be equal partners in our connection with them. They don't want to just simply lead. Like we've all come here as souls for this human experience to grow. And we grow through experiences. We grow through opportunities of making decisions of what we want to do next and then deal with the consequences regardless of what they are. Right. And then what do we do next? And it's, it's constant growth like that. And so spirit really wants us to value deeply the human part of the experience as well as our connection with them. And when we do that, we bring two equal parts to the table 
to create this really beautiful partnership. And so it, like we're saying, it is very common for a lot of people to attempt to spiritually bypass stuff. I have done that myself. There's been several well, there's times comfort in that, right? There's there is. Yeah. Going to spirit and saying, you know what? You take over and yeah. it's not wrong, but like, you're going to have to go back to it regardless. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And so it's, there's a real value to, you know, spending time with yourself and think and asking the questions of like, what do I feel about the situation? What do I notice is my responsibility in this situation? Because that's the other thing is we come into a human embodiment to have an experience so that we can personally grow and learn, meaning we have a big responsibility in it, meaning everything is not pointed outward. So much is actually reflected back to us and allow us to choose what we want to do about it. And what we do about it is, you know, maybe a deep conversation that has to happen. Maybe it is simply sending prayers and love energy to somebody and letting go. Maybe mm -hmm. it is, you know, therapy, maybe it's coaching, maybe it's taking a bold step forward in a direction that you were nervous to do, but you do. Again, it's choosing based on also the human self. A hundred percent. For self, mm -hmm. right? Like you matter in your journey. It's not just spirit that matters or other people that matter, but like you and what you think and what you do matters in your journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that being said, how did you guys find the energies this week? Like, what did you guys experience? Like, I know for me, it felt like this kind of, um, like if there was a slip and slide, but put on like rolling hills, I felt like I was just sliding through the whole week. And sometimes the sliding was awesome. And I'm like, yeah, I got this. I'm in flow. I'm like sliding right here. I've got this cool pose as I'm sliding. And then other times it felt like I was like head over heels, but still sliding. And for me, what I really learned was as I was validating my own things, things I wanted to change, realizations I had, I was able to really embrace surrender, right? And surrender to me for this week anyways, was the answer. Because when I surrendered, a lot more things became really clear. So that was more my experience of the week. How about you guys? My experience, <clears throat> I would say has been similar. And, you know, even on the, the lens of, sometimes like sometimes we'll kind of call it being 3d like just being in our human experience and i find when my life is really busy when there's a lot of things coming up a lot's going on um you know i'm coming out of a year and i know a lot of us are but for in my own experience i'm coming i don't even want to say coming out because i still feel like i'm in it a bit but it seems like it's shifting a little bit where 3d life felt like a chaotic gong show <laughs> If I'm honest, it was just one thing after another, after another. And I have been trying to pull on all of my tools and all of the things that I work with other people on to just like, just keep swimming. Right. And I noticed through that, there was a lot of frustration for me because I would lean to spirit and be like, what you guys got? Let me know, help me out. And certainly wasn't totally left in the dark, but was to mm. some extent was not given answers or guidance that I was looking for. And to be honest, kind of pissed me off at times because I'm like, listen, I'm going down this, you know, the spiritual journey, the ascension journey, a lot of people talk about it and kind of like rose colored glasses it, but it's, it's intense and it's not a bad thing, but it's just, it's a lot. And I know for myself, it's just been a really intense year, a really intense couple years from a human perspective. And I felt a little bit abandoned by them in times because it was like, here I do all this opening up and connecting and da, 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 da. And now you're not here when I need you. And I think sometimes, you know, oftentimes when I talk to clients, they're like, how do I talk to spirit? Like, should I pray? Or do I have to create like sacred space? And I'm like, no, you can just talk to them. Like, I'll have a conversation in the car. I'll be, you know, walking my dogs or whatever. And it can be really informal like that, but it can also be like, I need help right now and i have asked for that in times when maybe they've been a little bit more quiet with me or haven't been giving me the answers that i needed i'd say like i need help right now but it always came with here's a piece of help now you go do the work with it 100 percent. do mm -hmm. the work with it and that's really what i've been leaning into this week what i've been leaning into for the last year is this kind of duality and i think at the same time as we can set boundaries and 
you know, have uh, certain expectations of how we're in relationship with people here, I think we can also have that with spirit. And I know I've had said, I've had times where I've said to them, like, do you forget what it's like to be on this planet? Like, do you forget what it's like to be in this human body? Because sometimes it is a lot, especially when we look at everything that's been going on in the last couple of years, it's been extraordinarily challenging for people on a thousand different fronts, right? Like almost every aspect of our human experience, depending on how you identify and what your kind of intersectionality is, has been rough. Like it's just, I don't know one person that's been like, oh, it's been easy breezy the last three years. And so I think that we need to remember that too. It's like, it is on us to do the work, to have the human experience. We, we chose to be here and that can even feel bypassy a little bit. And we're here. So do we want to work through this stuff or do we want to just default to spirit? And so it's this really interesting, I've just been really kind of reflecting on this like duality of our relationship with spirit and our relationship as humans and our relationship with other humans and all of the things. Um, so this week, it's been a lot of that. It's been the up and the down. It's been the what in the actual F is going on right now? How is this happening again? And also, okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And then I'll have a little, you know, little blip help from spirit. And then I can kind of come back down and enjoy being present. Mm -hmm. So that's me. Mm -hmm. I'm using Taylor Swift. <laughs> Just emote through Taylor Swift. See? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Swifty help for you, hey? That's awesome. How about you, Lisa? Oh, my, my week has been like, it's been like hard, <laughs> like very hard. But here's the thing is it's exactly that. It's like this, the most humanness that could be presented to me in this week was. And when I go to spirit and I'm like, look, I really like to work through, you know, this pain with ease and grace. Can you please help me? Like, can you show me the path? They're like, yeah, there you go. We'll reflect it so much so that it is impossible for you not to see right in front of you you know, and then all of a sudden I'm being reflected by all of the, these things. And so to be like completely vulnerable here, I have a, one of my biggest human lessons, I would say, in this go around is trust. It is. And so, I mean, that's a big one. If, if I'm given this thing to work through is trust, then obviously there's going to be a lot of situations in my human self where trust is compromised right because if, if I'm here to learn trust and I'm not born into this experience just trusting everybody and it being you know obviously I'm gonna have to learn trust right and so when we talk about like shining the stuff into the corners what's being reflected back to me is these situations being presented not that they're I'm being hurt and I have to learn trust it's like remember at the core level it's understanding and learning trust so what has been reflected back to me specifically this week is situations that are presented where normally what triggers me is I go into the not trust right away right and so it created these really vulnerable experiences for me and I felt it to the core the anxiety and the lack of sleep that I felt because all these situations and the, the lack of communication and all of these really really painful human experiences has been reflected back to me so deeply this week and spirit is right there you know mother mary is one of my strongest allies and she's right there she's like i got you honey but this is what we're talking about this is the depth of the corners in which you want to ascend this is what's being reflected back to you because this is still holding space in your human existence so how am i going to learn trust by meditating and my guide saying you need to learn trust i know i know but I also am not choosing to have experiences where I'm deeply, deeply actually hurt so that my trust is crumbling and I don't feel it anymore. It's giving me opportunities that are very human opportunities where the people that I love very deeply are reflecting back to me this opportunity it is for me to shine that into the corner and say, how can I learn trust in this situation? And it's me. And I thank the people who show up to reflect it back at me. But this is the human things that we're talking about. I have to then say how on this earth plane, Lisa Richmond, me today is going to learn the true act of trust while I'm choosing to find a really good therapist because I want 
to dig into that corner and learn. And I think that this is going to help me. I also want to go into the human parts of myself and my timeline where I can go see little Lisa and say to her, hey, hon, I understand that you were hurt very deeply and that your trust got turned off big time, but I'm here to tell you that I got you and you're safe. You know, that's a very human experience that I need to experience because that is one of my deepest things to transmute, to hold, to learn from so that I can ascend into my highest self in this life. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that is my very human experience that I can't spiritually bypass because then, you know, what's going to happen Freaking six months down the road, boom, yeah. reflection, yeah. trust, gut wrench, anxiety, ugh, crumble of self. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's my humanness in this. And I'm like, okay. But the difference I feel in this time is that I was gifted by some like spiritual downloads and understandings that this is a reflection that's being back to me. So I can learn it in this human plane, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. And I think that's great. Like the realization of that is really powerful when we, when we have those like clarity moments from the triggers, it's so cool when you're like, oh, and you can feel it, like just move through your whole body of this resounding yes. Yeah. And I know I experienced that this week a couple, a couple times with, um, for me, it was the realization of different lessons that I have assumed were complete, were done, were dealt with, and they were right? They were, and they are. But then what I saw this week in those kind of rolling hills for me was layers and a new layer appeared. I'm like, what is that? And then when I gave it the time and the space to show itself, I'm like, oh, that's what it was. Right. And that then allowed me to have like further healing or further understanding and this beautiful cohesion with the lesson of it. Right. But for me, I noticed a lot of things happening in layers. Mm -hmm. this week too. And like realizations and awareness and, um, but I had to be willing to feel reflecting it. it to you though. Like, do you see it on a human plane, like on a human level? No, for me, it would be like these thoughts or these storylines coming back into my mind, ruminating around. And I'm like, what are you doing here? Like, didn't, wasn't this like, so, you know, several years ago and, but they were coming back in and just kind of like, percolating I'm like why is yeah. that percolating and again for me when I surrendered and I was like I don't really understand why it's here but here's your space to be there thank you for being here and then all of a sudden it would come in and like almost like Tetris mm. right like they were like all sitting there floating and then all of a sudden it would click in and my whole body would become aware of why a new layer a smaller thinner layer was being shown to me and one of them was essentially me labeling something like I understood the whole story, but when I, when I gave it a label, which I tend to try not to give something a label, right? So here was the opposite act of what I would normally try and do. I try to let things be as they are, but in this case, labeling it, something allowed me to like, like wrap it in this sphere of understanding and see it for all that it was. And it just kind of filtered back in, percolated, said hello. And I was like, I don't know. I surrendered it. And then it clicked in, right? It, and, it, and so it was just interesting. It was these like subtle arrivals of deeper layers of understanding for me this week that had I run from them, they would have been confronting. But right. instead I allowed them space to be there. And I had to do that consciously too. Because of course, when certain things come up, we're kind of like, ew, no, yeah, <laughs> or like, no, go away. But I was like, all right, you're here. So here we go. Let's both slide on this slip and slide until we understand what's going on. And, and so for me, it was just interesting to see the surrender brought layers of awareness for me. I think yeah. to your point, Jeanette, what you just said about like, sometimes when those things happen, we're like, ew, like, ugh. and I think another response can be like, a I don't even love this word. I need to come up with a different one, but like a victim mentality of like, why again? Why me? And I am pretty sure I messaged you this week and I'm like, I got a little victim self rant here about my dog because problems, blah, blah, whatever. Um, not a big deal, but we get in this like, well, but why I, I dealt with this and why it's not fair. And what somebody that I worked with, it was this wonderful, wise woman back in my like HR days. Um, I loved working with her and she had just such nuggets of wisdom. And I remember her telling me, and I'll never forget this. She's like, sometimes when we're learning lessons, 
we circle back around and we think, how did I come back to this place? But if we actually pause and look up and look down and look to the side and look specifically down, we realize that yes, we've maybe circled, but we've circled up to a different vantage point. Yeah. And then again, and then again, and it's a it's an ever ending onion of unfolding these layers just because it's coming back around doesn't mean you haven't done the work doesn't mean all of the things that you have tried not even tried but done and worked mm-hmm. through work or not because I think we can get in that like well it's never going to end and it's like if you keep with it you will notice that it starts to get easier and it starts mm-hmm. to get lighter and the higher you circle up yes you might come to the same vantage point but it'll feel lighter the air will feel cooler it will feel you know you will feel the breeze more because you're not in the depths of it anymore mm-hmm. you're circling up which i always just love that imagery because i feel like it just helps when we're in this like oh again like really why mm-hmm. and that's that can feel heavy mm-hmm. um sorry i was reading something hmm? oh, nice. um The other thing that was coming up this week, or not this week, like a lot lately that I've been having these conversations with people about, and Lisa, something that you said kind of brought it back to the forefront again was I've been having a lot of conversations about the, like in the human experience and the trauma that we face, right? Things happen to us, people hurt us, people, you know, do whatever, right? Things happen to us that are outside of our control. And sometimes where the spiritual bypass feeling can be is well, I signed up for this. And while it's true in a lot of spiritual ways, that doesn't negate the real human pain that it creates, right? And, you know, from like a psychology perspective, I've been having these conversations with multiple people now about how karmically it feels so unfair that people do things to us, we experience a trauma or whatever, and then it's our responsibility to heal it, right? It's not our fault that it happened. It's not, you know, on us to have changed it or to have done anything differently. And yet it is our responsibility as human beings, like only we can heal it. There's even going to a therapist, right? They're not fixing you, they're holding space for you. Same with coaches, same with spiritual healers, same with energy healers. They're holding and opening up a space for you that is safe and deep to reflect should you wish to go into that work. And it feels like, karmically unfair in a lot of ways because it's like why is that but I think you know that is where when we get cracked open those pieces of light can come in and it gives us this beautiful gift that as much as it's like so painful and so icky it allows us to start uncovering those onion layers and it allows us to become in come come into a deeper relationship with ourselves Mm -hmm. and move towards the things that everybody talks about as like enlightenment and conscious evolution and joy and peace and all of the like wonderful emotions that we're all told we should have all the time but that's just not real it's like through the trauma through the awful experiences they're not fair they shouldn't have happened and yet they have and so here is your opportunity to take something with it take it and do something with it and shift Mm -hmm. your own life and your own well-being and then in a spiritual way, your own evolution and your own consciousness. So that next life, hopefully you don't have to deal with that stuff again. <laughs> you know, maybe you've learned those lessons and you can move forward. So it's just this really like convoluted, I think, karmic law. But at the same time, I also, from a spiritual perspective, know that like that is very purposeful. And if it wasn't for us to heal it, it probably wouldn't have the same growth impact that it does when totally. we do Totally. It totally so- wouldn't. Because when that, when that moment clicks for you from some either traumatic past experience or cringeworthy experience of maybe where you're like, how was that action of that human me, right? Like when you look back at your own past and you're like, oh my God, I did that. Or I said that, or I believed that, or I judged that or whatever these, like, I'll just call them cringeworthy moments. When we can realize how much that taught us. And how had we not gone through that? We, there's no way we would carry the same frequency we do now. Like there's this massive gratitude. Mm-hmm. But the funny thing is you can have this massive gratitude, but still be like, oh gosh, mm-hmm. like <laughs> really? But grateful, but really? You know, it's just this funny, it's like balance point of balancing the human with the spiritual, but also even like you're saying, the psychological understanding of it. 
right? It's big, murky, oh, that's bubbly like mess. to it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally. And it takes a sec to truly like understand the difference between looking outside of ourselves, whether it's to a partner, whether it's to a parent, whether it's to a sibling or spirit to say, I, you know, I need you to help me through this. Like where I thought I had the support, you're not there for me, right? And although it's really nice to feel that support from our loved ones, they're not there to fix you. Nobody knows how to fix you. You're Number one, you're not broken. And number two, when you were really longing for a need that possibly wasn't met, which I think is kind of at the root of all of it, only you can know what that actual need was because everybody else's needs come from everybody else. So we can unconsciously try and choose somebody to uh, like meet that need and help reflect to us that we are getting that nurturing that we didn't get or that acceptance that we didn't get or that validation in some way, shape or form that we didn't get at some place, right? But only Mm -hmm. we know. So quite often we'll look back and be like, parents like they didn't do this or this or this yeah but like seeking that validation from that parent or maybe from our loved one that we found to try to fill that void very much unconsciously it's not going to happen it's just not so I think like in a very humanist psychological perspective we have to go back and say okay what did we need Mm -hmm. because we're not validating their behavior because quite often it's like well we can't validate it we can't say yeah that was you know that's a big thing is like they did the best they could yeah they did they did the best they knew how at the time Mm -hmm. fair that can be period done but it wasn't enough for what I needed that's acknowledgement of self because quite often we're thought oh well we're really selfish or we're ungrateful because we said you know they had all this trauma themselves fair but we're not talking about them right now You know, if you didn't get what you needed or in a time you felt shame because of X, Y, and Z, it's important to go back to that part of self and say, hey, you didn't get what you need. And then ask, what did you need? Sometimes for the very first time, we ask ourselves what we needed in that time frame, right? And then being able to fully acknowledge that and then maybe work at giving ourselves that. Absolutely. It's like our first step to our human humanness in that very human experience. But like you said, Elise, it's in that moment that we can then, um, you know, raise our level of consciousness, kind of expand on a spiritual level because we are releasing these constraints that have been brought to us on this human plane. So when you said at the beginning, Jeanette, it's about this beautiful connection. It's about this spirit and human like co-creation that makes it work. Sometimes it's strong spirit and that is very good and it feels safe and warm, Mm -hmm. but sometimes it's very human. It's not always a perfect balance. Ideally it's a perfect balance, but sometimes our humanness has to be strong and our soul has to just stand there and say, Hey, I got you while you do this. And sometimes our humanness has to just rest yeah. where we can sit in our, our contemplation, meditation, our silence, our rest for a bit too. You know what I mean? You know, I want to share one story of where my guides helped me put the onus on me. And so it was a really neat experience. And uh, I've talked about this before, but it's worth repeating is one time I was going through this like major tower moment in my life. And you know, it just felt like everything was crumbling and I was so angry. And I noticed for myself that no matter who I talked to, I still didn't feel heard. And my guides were like, why do you think you don't feel heard? I'm like, I don't know. Nobody understands what I'm trying to say. Right. And I kept looking outward for validation. And they're like, why don't you look inward for validation? And then they gave me this imagery of setting up my camera and me speaking to my camera. And then they said, then take a breath and watch it. And I was like, what? And I remember it was like, oh my God, that's so revealing, but I did it. And I remember I turned the camera on. It was very revealing in its own aspect, but it was so freeing because I spoke as harsh, as openly, as vulnerably. Uh, I cried. I did everything. I think probably yelled and everything. Like I just, I let it all out. And then I took a moment and then I watched me and the act 
of me watching me. I heard what me had to say and I held space for me. And then the me watching knew what the me on the video needed. Totally. Right? And sometimes we don't separate that enough. And so only you know that only you exactly. know what that person needs that yourself needs. Exactly. And that moment right there was so validating of exactly that statement. I was like, only I know what I need. And it was from there that I was start, that I was able to start to pick up the pieces. Cause I could recognize like, okay, where, where does this person on the video need to start? What can I do to help this mm. you know, version of me to totally. start? And yeah. it helped me like, pull the two apart and hear them kind of objectively. It was just really profound, but that was spirit though. So that's the funny thing is spirit was teaching me how to help me get to the root of me, which essentially then I had to do the work. So it was yeah. just this like, yeah, it was just this profound experience. So I encourage anyone who doesn't even know where to start. Like if you don't know where to start in your trauma or your issue, and you can't even find a root or anything, consider trying that speaking to your own video and then taking a moment, even like go, you know, make some food, wash your hair, change your energy and come back and then sit and watch you mm -hmm. and see what you find. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's interesting because I would venture a lot of people would feel deeply uncomfortable doing it. It is very revealing yeah. because even yeah. to sit and watch, like there's You're so reason. exposed. Yeah. There's a reason that zoom has a like hide yourself view <laughs> feature. Yeah, because it's like we just don't want to go there, and I think part yeah. of it knows like if we go there, so much will be reflected back, and totally. that can feel very unsafe. And so I loved what you said about like changing your energy, going having a shower, like doing something to nourish yourself. Mm -hmm. If it does feel like oh, I'm nervous about this, or I you know get cozy, whatever that is, but like holding safety for yourself in that too, because it it can feel very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. And I feel like with this whole conversation, um, we're really talking a lot about like balance. And I think balance of spirit self, human self, I feel like balance is often as like, I'm terrible with grammar, noun, adjective, verb, I don't know, but it's like a thing, right? <laughs> um, it's, we talk about balance as like something to get to. I need to be balanced. And I actually think that balance is more of a verb. It's more of a perpetual act of yeah. going back and forth because very rarely can we actually hold both in equal balance. Like that just doesn't, and me as you know, my primary sign is a Libra. It's like, I feel like I'm always looking for balance and I recently kind of had that understanding within myself of like, but what if this is balancing, right? Like what mm -hmm. if it is sometimes I am deeply spiritual and I am having profound meditations and all that I need to know is coming through me and energy and spirit and mystical, magical experiences. And then sometimes I'm like a really heavy human that needs to work through my shit and hold space for myself and hold space for this life, not all about past lives. And all of those things but what if it's also that too and then sometimes i shift to here and then whoop, off it goes again and so it's that that back and forth that i think is what's really beautiful and what's really part of our experience like just why we're here if, it, if everything stops moving then everything stops moving right within the balance is movement so that's important too yeah i agree Spirit's message so deeply in this conversation is that right now is a heightened awareness in our human experiences. And to know that, yes, you're deeply supported. There's so much love and support in our spirit realm for our human experience. So it's really an invitation to feel because if we came here to feel and we didn't feel, like if we didn't actually feel, we wouldn't be able to grow and have any of that balance either, right? We wouldn't have the joy. There's, so it's put less judgment on how far you're coming or how well you're doing and more like just compassion for self in this human experience. So when you talked about surrender, Jeanette, it's like, I think if we surrendered more to the act of our humanness and healing in this journey, and less about the expectations and actually the almost like 
pre-programmed perception of how much it hurts, right? Because I'm not saying it doesn't hurt, but I'm saying the more surrender we have to this human experience and being open to experiencing it, I think the less hurt we really feel because the surrender allows you the opportunity to experience. And so like really encouraging you not to go past the human act of feeling and experiencing into, you know, ultimate just giving of you know your power away to trust in the spiritual it's happening for a reason and I just have to try everything happens for a reason so I don't know what this reason is but I'm just gonna like you know to hey what do I need right now what do I as a human being need right now in order to be and feel safe and secure and whole in myself as a human and just like be open to it you know, and you are supported. I think that's beautiful. Jean, do your guides have anything coming in right now? Um, let me see, actually. Hold on. Let me just tune in. Okay. Um, it's actually really quite beautiful. Um, they're saying, so they're showing me this imagery of like people walking with their, like holding hand in hand. And then when I pulled my view back, they're like, remember too, that not only is spirit walking hand in hand with you to help you learn when you need to step up, but also bring that security. But then when I pulled my view out, they said, remember also your ancestors are around you. Every time you're stepping into deeper healing, your ancestors and those that you knew in life that are now in spirit are also gathering around you. So like, not only are you deeply supported by your own human self when you go into that, but your ancestors on the other side are deeply supporting the deep healing happening right now. Mm -hmm. And so they're very, very near, very, very close, very, um, yeah, very much around. Mm -hmm. And also to like, they're saying as you talk to them too, and kind of like, talk about what you're going through and have the conversations with your ancestors, your ancestors also get to kind of heal frequencies that maybe they had limitations in life in healing as well. And their awareness that they couldn't do in life, they can almost like energetically pair with you and help heal. That's how the ancestral healing works. Essentially, is they can pair with you and transmute their experience based on your experience. And it just like goes okay. way down the line. So totally. big emphasis on the ancestral healing with all of the individual healing happening right now. Yeah. which in turn causes this like global frequency to increase yeah that's what we're talking about mm -hmm. um it's funny what was just coming through for me is they were saying and part of the reason why i asked you jeanette as well is they were like notice how when we logged on this morning like we had technology problems like we we tried for a half an hour to record before we actually could and we eventually had to switch platforms and it was frustrating we were like what is going on and they said, notice how we stayed out of it. Like we, we didn't come in through the conversation. We held space for the 3D until the end. And then they started talking mm -hmm. and we're offering guidance. Whereas normally with Spirit Coffee Talk, they're like popping in all, all the time, right? But we had a very like human conversation. Yeah. Today. They're like, <laughs> we're always here. We're yeah. always ready to like pop in when it's going to best serve you. But sometimes yeah. we don't know our human selves don't know when that is yeah um so yeah. i'm like okay haha <laughs> funny it's fine <laughs> yeah thank you fun thanks got it love that yeah <laughs> the thing that they said was that <laughs> notice too <coughs> the, the the human and I, I love what you both just said about like a global perspective that much of the challenges that we are facing today on this planet fill in the blank with any sort of thing going on is not from a spirit perspective. It's from a human 3D wounded perspective. Spirit cannot come in and fix the humanness. Spirit needs us to fix the humanness. Mm -hmm. So they can't come in and just say like, oh, all your trauma's gone. Whoop, all your yeah. beliefs are gone. Oh, you're, you're <coughs> this, that, da, 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 da. The things that drive us to make the decisions that don't really align with where we're going and where we you know, are aligned to go in this world are not coming from spirit. They're coming from something within us as a human self. That's not for them to fix. So they, they can't, yeah. they can support and hold that space, but it's, they're, they're 3D issues. They're not spirit issues. 
Um, That's a really neat point. Excellent. Oh, that was a good well, one. ladies. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. And uh, hopefully this conversation helped kind of ease some of the burden on your shoulders too. Cause I know I feel like lighter and more held and held by self and held by spirit. And, you know, uh, I really hope that ripples through to each and every one of you watching. So that being said too, um, Thank you always for joining us and please do hit subscribe and share because that really helps our channel grow and reach more people through the algorithm. So um, definitely do that. Any other thoughts, ladies? Enjoy your weekend. Have some fun. All right, everyone. Okay, we'll see you guys next week.